We want to start by telling you all about colon cancer awareness now that I've gotten through all these papers. Uh, so I want to go ahead and welcome Dr. Shabier St. John, who is a GI, uh, with a GI unit at QEH, and he is a colorectal surgeon. Also here is Michelle Howell, who's the nurse in charge in the GI unit, and Esther Sargent, who's the health promotion nurse for the Caribbean Colon Cancer Initiative. Good morning to all of you and welcome. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. All right, wonderful to have you with us on this day, particularly when we're looking at sleep, uh, but including other areas of health as well. So we know that um, colon cancer is one of those things that, again, is affecting Barbadians in a massive way. So set the table for us, uh, Dr. St. John, so to speak, in terms of where we are and what the research says about how Barbadians are being affected by colon cancer. Okay, well, thanks for having us. Of course. So the most recent data that we have from the Barbados National Registry from 2018 is that colon cancer is the second most common cancer any Barbadian will suffer from in their lifetime. So in women after breast cancer, of course, and in men after prostate cancer, it's the second most common cancer. So in a week, at least three people are being diagnosed with colon cancer every week. Uh, four people, to put it in perspective, four people will be diagnosed with prostate cancer, three may be diagnosed with breast cancer. So we're right there with breast cancer in terms of incidence. Unfortunately, two-thirds of these people will not make it past a year after diagnosis because we're picking up this disease way too late when these people have to have life-saving surgery, but then they have disease that has already spread or had the potential to spread, we have to hit them with chemotherapy, radiation, which are very toxic to the body. And even then, we're not uh, achieving good survival rates. So that's where we are. And that's why there's impetus on screening and health promotion to help people pick up the precursor disease, which is a little tiny polyp that we can actually remove in the GI unit and prevent cancer from forming in the first place. All right, that's, that's a great deal, but it, it says a lot, kind of, as I mentioned, sets the table for what we're looking at. Now, Nurse Howell, I must admit, I, this is the first time I'm hearing about the GI unit yes. at the QEH. Obviously, we know that there must be a unit that would deal with um, internal matters and so on, but this is the first time that I'm hearing about the GI unit. Tell us a little bit about what you do in the GI unit and why you encourage people to engage or interact with you? Yes, so what I do in the GI unit, I would usually be in charge of making sure that the patients are admitted to the unit, they are um, followed up after they're, they're having their procedures, assist with the doctor during the procedure, removing of polyps, and while well, the doctor is screening for anything, if there's anything that's found that is not supposed to be there in the colon, the patient is also spoken to after by us and referred to the relevant persons who would, you know, deal with them after. And I also do the ordering of stock and stuff in the unit. So that is really my role in the unit, making sure everything runs as it's supposed to also. All right. Yeah. So, you know, that's a, that's a handful. Overall, uh, can people engage directly with the unit or um, are you just referred based on coming to the QEH and then based on whatever is happening with you, then there's a referral to the unit? Is that how it works? People can, can come to the unit direct and they can come and ask questions and then we, we take them to the relevant, point them to the relevant uh, parties to which they can get to see the doctor, to get their screen done and what's not. And they, yes, they also do true referrals. So we do have direct referrals and people can come and speak to us direct where we can direct them, as I just said, to the relevant persons, doctors, so they can get screening. All right. So uh, for the Caribbean Colon Cancer Initiative, I'd like to hear a little bit more about it and when it came to being. Okay, so the Caribbean Colon Cancer Initiative is mainly a group 
um, of medical persons and non-medical persons whose aim is to really minimize the risk of colon cancer related deaths and we're doing this through research we were formed in the year 2021 so we're relatively new so the um, research is ongoing at the moment but we are also looking at promoting awareness for colon cancer because colon cancer is one of the cancers that you can prevent and this is done through screening as Dr. St. John would have said and we are here mainly to let persons know hey you can prevent this by being screened. We know persons pay a lot of attention to breast and to prostate but they don't pay as much attention to colon and we would like you to get your checks just as you normally do within the year for the other cancers to have your yearly checks. This can be done through the colonoscopy, as Dr. St. John said, but we recognize within the Caribbean Colon Cancer Initiative that colonoscopies can be costly in the private sector, and persons really don't have that funding, and in the public sector, it can be a bit of a long waiting period. So we came up then with the idea of having an additional screening tool that is readily available to persons, and this is called a FIT test, and Dr. St. John will probably go into more of that in terms of what it is scientifically but my aim as the health promotion nurse is to make this kit readily available for persons is basically a stool based test where we are looking for blood within the stool and once that test is taken and it is negative then you would not need to repeat that test until the next year if it is positive because bleeding is abnormal then you would need to have the colonoscopy to find out why you are having that bleed it doesn't mean if blood is there that you have colon cancer there are many other diseases that can cause you to bleed but we would not want you to sit and assume it is this or the other so the colonoscopy is the best definitive diagnosis for Tule. Yeah. all right so you can follow on dr st john right so as esther rightly said the fit test detects very microscopic amounts of blood in the stool and then flags for us that we need to do something else and that something else is usually a colonoscopy but I, what i do want people to know is that colonoscopy is not the only test that can be used to look through the colon. I know that there are a lot of people who are afraid of getting procedures, afraid of going to sleep or getting sedation, afraid of the risk because no test is without risk. We're taking a flexible tube going through a very twisty, windy colon and there, there are many times when I, I cannot get through the entire colon for whatever reason. The person may have had previous surgery. Uh, the anatomy is just very difficult, but there are other tests at our disposal. There's something called a virtual colonoscopy or a CT colonoscopy, where you put the person in a CAT scan. So the preparation is the same in terms of cleansing the bowel so it's empty, but you can put them in a CAT scan to look through the colon. And, I've, and I have done it many times. It's available in the public system at the Queen Elizabeth Hospital as well as in the private sector. So I just want people to also know we're not plugging for individual tests based on what we do on a daily basis. We just want that you begin to have a conversation with your general practitioner, your doctor at your polyclinic about colon cancer screening. And that conversation should realistically be happening at 40 years old. Notice I said the conversation, not necessarily I'm gonna go and get tested, but we really should start thinking about it at 40 because the data out of the demographic that we are in, which is Afro-Caribbean or black, um, is alarming that we are getting cancer much earlier than the average population that has been studied in the past, which is in Europe and, and in the US, which will be Caucasian population. We are actually getting cancer earlier and it's more aggressive. So I believe people should start having that conversation earlier. Not to say that they're going for the test, but talk to their doctor and then we can you know, get where we need to go. Is there a major difference in terms of ranking? As you mentioned, not to push one test or the other, mm -hmm. but in terms of ranking, certainly uh, from your position where you sit, um, you know, would you advise for one in terms of a ranking system over the other, as opposed to we know that generally uh, people, if we get them to do a test, usually it's after they've seen something happening, right. not necessarily taking a proactive approach right. to their health. So, uh, you know, once somebody has something going on, blood in the stool or something else that points in the direction that there might be a problem, um, how do those tests line up to be able to get to the root of the matter? Right. So before we get to the test, the first thing we do is risk stratify. What is your individual lifetime risk for colon cancer? And really, the one risk factor that cannot be modified is age. So we know by about 50, you may start to develop these polyps 
and they take usually 10 years to grow into cancer. So everyone is going to hit 50 if they you know, are healthy and well, and they're going to have an average risk. But then there are people who will have a high risk. So if you have a family history, if you have a prior history of polyps or cancer, or if in your family people had colon cancer at a very young age, then we know there's probably a gene in your family that is predisposing you to that. So people who are of average risk, we, we would recommend the FIT test or the colonoscopy. Really, at the end of the day, you can choose which one is right for you based on cost, availability, and how you feel. Each test has its pros and its cons, obviously. For those who are high risk or increased risk, we would recommend straight to colonoscopy because we think that there is likely to be something, more likely than not, to be something in their colon. All right, again, in terms of ranking, that would go uh, age, heredity, yes. and down the line. Yes, yes, but the colonoscopy is the gold standard because you look at the lining of the colon, and if you see anything, you can take it out or take a piece to send it to the lab. So it's very sensitive and specific. The stool test you know, is less sensitive and specific because that thing in the colon has to be bleeding at that point when you do the test. So that's why we recommend it be done on a yearly basis so that you have a larger sample size over time to pick up something. Nurse Howell, uh, a colonoscopy can be quite uncomfortable uh, to prepare for. Uh, I don't think the actual thing itself, you know, once uh, people have it, I've had people in my life who've, who've had the test done. So I know preparing for it can be a little difficult. What are, what are patients telling you when they come in, uh, in terms of when you engage with them? What are we missing as Barbadians? Is it strictly the screening, or are Barbadians looking past other signs that, that might be there? I, I realize that um, a lot of people in Barbados, and I think maybe over the world, but in dealing with Barbados, um, they don't pay attention to their stools and, and their bowels, as we will know. And I find that sometimes there are some that by the time they come, it's either already happening or there is an issue which is such as bleeding or they already have signs that they would have ignored because a lot of people, as I say, they ignore their bowel movement, they ignore their bowel habits. So what I would say to, to say this now is to try to pay more attention to your bowels, pay attention to not only just your bowels, pay attention to your eating habits, pay attention to your, your diet, your, your weight, because sometimes you can have rapid weight loss, and just always look back in the toilet. A lot of people don't look back, and they need to look back and examine, you know, just look back and examine your stools, the color, the consistency, if it decreases, if it increases in diarrhea. So that's the things I find that is not happening in the Barbadian public. Yeah? Right. I'm happy to see that there's a Caribbean Colon Cancer Initiative and a health promotion nurse. But, you know, over time we found that there really hasn't been enough emphasis on this area. So for you, uh, how have you found the response has been to this initiative in terms of getting the information out to people? Um, I don't know if there's any empirical data that then Dr. St. John can uh, kind of subsidize with what you share with us about how these efforts are paying off. Okay, so I recently joined a team and I can say um, within joining the team, there's another doctor who is Dr. Caroline Haynes and we take it upon ourselves to go out weekly within the community. So we go to general practitioners, we go to business houses, schools, churches, wherever we are welcome. And I find that persons are really receptive of the information. Some persons, even women, would come up to us and they would say like, I need to give this information to my husband. And we were like, why not you as yourself? And they were like, well, women don't have a colon. So then we found it. Pardon? <laughs> yes, they do say things like that. So then we found that that was a way. Women don't have a colon. That's what persons have Are the people thought. in the Barbadian community yes, saying please. that? Yes, please. So then we were able then to let them know all persons have a colon. So then that game would have engaged us then to have a conversation and give them the information that will help empower them. So I found that this initiative has been a very good one and we will continue to advocate in terms of colon cancer awareness. Wow. We have a host of activities coming up because this is our month 
and we really want persons to come out and and celebrate with us as we promote awareness but also take um what should i say take the fact that you can prevent this cancer once you are screened once you have the information this is a cancer you can prevent so we have tomorrow as early as tomorrow we have a health fair where the gi unit will be showcasing with us as well and we are having that fair at the three w's oval at the uwi campus and that's from 10 till 2 and we would have a host of other persons partaking in this fair cancer support cancer society so persons really understand that you know this is something you need to take seriously as well within the evening we also have a panel discussion where we're now engaging the insurance companies and things like that because we want the insurance companies and persons to also recognize it's easier to screen so you can prevent than in the long run where you'll be paying a lot more money if persons actually have cancer so these Absolutely. are some of the things that we would be having. So would you like to just go ahead and share some of the other initiatives sure. that we can look forward to throughout the month? Yes, please. So on the 21st, we will be hosting a symposium. And this symposium would be spread across the table in terms of surgeons, um, persons from the international market as well, and pharmacists. We will be showcasing this symposium to again highlight persons about colon cancer. But this is also a place where persons in the medical field will be able to earn credits because we know that in order to re-register we need to have credits to continue so this is where you will be able to gain your credits and we then will be ending off the month because we recognize diet um, is important but exercise is also important so we would be ending off the month with a football match at the Desmond Haynes ground in Holders Hill and this match will be played against some of the teams such as Dr. St. John he's going to be on our team it will be a team of doctors nurses and orderlies some persons from in the community against the Barbados Defense Force. So it's a mixed team? Yes. I please. love it I'll be there. Thank you. <laughs> so in closing Dr. St. John uh, just to reinforce the resources and support systems that are available for those affected by colon cancer and talk to us quickly about how people can access these services. Right, so we have the FIT test, we have the colonoscopy and we have the virtual colonoscopy. Patients can go to their medical practitioners, patients can go to the polyclinic and I am available during the week to field calls from any professionals about colonoscopies or even what tests do you think I should do next so I've been trying to cut down the waiting times to get to these tests so previously to get into the clinic it was maybe a one to two year wait just because we only have one set of equipment and we have to do things one by one I've been trying to cut that down so right now my individual waiting time for something that is not urgent maybe like screening is May June Wow. but obviously I <clears throat> recognize that increasing awareness will increase uh, the numbers and the demand so we are actually speaking in both the public and private sector to get um, more equipment more nurses trained and more people who can handle the scope doctors trained to do more so we're thinking you know this is short term but we're thinking in intermediate and long term and i know that uh, the government and the chief medical officer are speaking about a national colon cancer screening a recommendation and guidelines and I eagerly await and you know partner with them on that initiative. All right excellent I want to thank all of you for coming in and sharing and of course we're just in the middle of the month so I'd love to have you come back and share some more information we can never compact everything into sh such a short segment but uh, as you mentioned it's a great conversation starter and I think that's important for people to be able to at least think about what's happening with their health. Of course, Morning Barbados is here to amplify the voices of those people advocating for all of these worthy causes in the community. Like today, we're encouraging you as well to go green for glaucoma. I'm wearing my green. We'll see that at some point in time. And uh, if you've not already picked out that outf outfit or left the house, uh, put on a little something green in support of glaucoma. Yesterday was also uh, the day that we were looking at kidney disease so and their color is also green so if you can aid us in getting the messages out so that we can help Barbadians get on a healthier footing then absolutely do it thank you again for coming through morning morning